Hi everyone. In this video I want to talk about drop-down lists and list box fields and talk a little bit about the similarities and the differences between these fields and also the similarities between these fields and text fields. So if you take a look at the form I have on screen here, you see I have a number of fields already populated here. Let me start at the beginning and we'll start by creating a drop-down field. I'll get my tool and come in and I'll just click here to set up my field and I'll just call this my field here and give it a name and then I'm going to take a look at the properties. Now in the properties over here let me go to appearance and I'm going to change the properties. I'll have a let's say I want a blue border and a white fill and those that appearance is what I want. Now if I want to have this appear as a new f default. In other words, I want all of my drop downs to have a blue border and a white fill. I can change the default each time I add a new drop down field. And the way I do that is to open a context menu. And at the very bottom here, I'm going to choose use current properties as new defaults. And you can see when I create a new drop-down menu here, then I have a blue border and a white fill. Let's go back and take a look at the properties. Okay, so general and appearance and position, these first three tabs, as well as from actions all the way to calculate, are absolutely identical to text fields. And I created a video earlier about all the, the attribute choices you have for text fields. If you haven't seen that video, you can actually click this link down here that goes to my channel. It'll open your web browser and link to my channel. And when you get to my channel, click on videos. And you can see that I have in this video here all about text fields. This video explains all the attribute choices you have for all of those tabs, with the exception of, let's get back over here to the properties, with the exception of options. Now in options, this is unique for drop-down menus. I can type in an item, let's say I just type in one here, and this export value will allow me to enter a text or a number, any kind of value you want. When the data are exported, then it's going to export the data that you define in this field here. So I can type in one, let's say, as an example. And then if I go two, type in two here and three okay then what I want to do is also I want to add some kind of notifier at the top either a message that says uh, please choose one of the items below or add some asterisks or lines or whatever just something that's going to delineate the top item from all the rest when I add this it goes to the bottom and what I need to do is move it up to the top and when you make a choice here and you dismiss this dialog box whatever you've chosen is going to appear as the default so for example if I choose three down here and I exit and you can see that in my drop down, three is my choice, and I don't want that. So, what I want to do is be absolutely certain that I choose the item that I want as my default. I click on these, and you can see that when I go over here, this is my default. And every time you clear the form or reset the form, it's always going to revert back to your default. Then, down at the bottom, we have several items down here. We have sort items, allow user to enter custom text. If I click this, maybe I want to add another item up here and I'll call this other. 
and we'll give it an export value of zero. Other as a choice, when I, I need to select my default before I dismiss it, then I can have a user, actually the user can type over any one of these fields, it doesn't matter which one, but typically that it would make more sense if it was other or some other name that you use other than one of the choices above, then they can select that and type their own value in it. You can check the spelling and this item that says commit selected value immediately. Sometimes with the JavaScript you may need that. In most cases you won't need it. It's not really that important, but if it's not calculating properly, check it. So if I go over here and take a look at my choices, if I choose other, and let's say I type in something like four over here, see that value then is retained. That's all you need to know about setting up a drop-down field. If you want to choose an item here, let's say I have a JavaScript, and whatever value you have in this field, then you can use exercise an action, you can exercise a JavaScript and pull the data and it will pull the one that's chosen. So I can, look, for example, this one is JavaScript to copy this value into this field down here. When I click, you can see that it does that. If you have two or more drop-down fields and you want to use the value selected from each one of those, then you need to use another property and I explain how to do that in another video. Let's take a look at my channel. We'll go over and take a look at that. I'll go to videos over here. And what I want to do is, you see, I have this item that says creating time calculations. If you take a look at this video, it shows you how you can take data from multiple drop-down lists and then use that data in a calculation okay the other thing that you can do is if you have a list that you create in microsoft excel microsoft word wordpad text edit on the mac any kind of text editor brackets any kind of text editor you can copy the a list into a drop down field or a list box and i explain that in another video I have over here, I have that in a video here that says text to drop down fields in Acrobat. So this uh, I have, you can download the form, that form appears like this, this is the form and you can just paste a list into this text field and then these buttons will copy either to a drop down or a list box. So the other item is a list box. List boxes, let's go ahead and just delete these and we'll create a list box Typically with list boxes, you probably want them a little bit larger because you want to see several rows of options that the user can choose. Uh, I'll just leave the default name and then we'll click on all properties. Once again, general appearance, position, and actions are the same as you have available in text fields. And you can find those options choices in that video that I discussed earlier. In options, you have a few different choices in options and list boxes that make it a little bit different than drop-down menus. For example, you have this option that says multiple selections, so you can choose more than one choice from the list if you have multiple selection uh, enabled. And if multiple selection is enabled, then you cannot commit the data immediately, obviously, because there are two choices there, so that won't work. You can sort the items just like uh, you can with list boxes. And once again, you can also copy columns of text in that uh, form that I showed you earlier. The, diff the other difference that you find with list box is this item that says selection change. In actions, 
you can see you can run a JavaScript and you can have this JavaScript invoked on any choice that you make in the list box. So this list box down here, I have the first item selected. If I use a JavaScript and I click on this again, it's going to invoke the action. Selection change is a little bit different in the fact that, let's get this, uh, you can see I have a JavaScript here. It, whenever I change from whatever is selected to another selection, then this script is going to be invoked. And here's a script simply that goes down here and takes a look at these fields with a client as the parent name and it's going to get all of the fields with a parent name client and it's going to hide those if I choose the second option here. This is something like let's say you have uh, a, an adult filling out a form and it's a, something intended for adults only and if you are not an adult and the user clicks the second option then all of these fields will be hidden. I'll take a look at how that works right here. And you can see that those fields are hidden below. So those are basically the two big differences between drop-down lists and list box fields and the primary differences between the two is that with drop-downs you can allow the user to input their own data on one of the field choices and with list boxes you can choose multiple choices multiple selections so i hope this is helpful for anyone looking at creating drop down menus and list box fields and this file is uploaded to my server there's a link below the video to this file that you can download and use for your own purposes so once again this is ted padova wishing you all the very best in all your acrobat activity